Hello YouTubers, this video is about wheels, fitting different wheels and more importantly larger wheels. I was inspired to do this video um, because of the difference in ride quality when I ride the Metro board. It has larger wheels than the boosted board and it does give some noticeable um, improvements in ride quality. I'll explain those later in the video. The first thing to discuss is the practicalities of changing the wheels. Um, the bearings the Chinese clone skateboard wheels use are standard. So wheels that accept the standard bearings will fit, or should fit, the Chinese clone trucks. The only proviso is the drive wheel, because it has that drive cog. But this isn't as difficult as you'd expect. That drive cog literally just slots into the spokes. That's a dark wheel, let's get a lighter wheel. It's got centre spokes and the drive cog literally just slips into that. To take it out, a simple... I can get it in the camera view. A screwdriver, flat-headed, will prise that off. Just be careful you don't um, bend that flange because the belt will rub against it. You want to keep that flat. But yes, that will come out quite easily and will slot into um, any wheel with that centre spoke arrangement. I think ABEC 11 wheels have these. Um, and the Metro board, let me get closer. I don't know if you can see, but the Metro board has that spoke arrangement as well. And I know it works. I've taken the drive cog from the Chinese clone and slotted it in the Metro board wheel, and it's a perfect fit. And the wheels I've used um, are budget ones off eBay, which I got for £50, and are exactly the same size as the Metro board wheels, which is 97 millimeters. Let me see if I can um, slot that out and give me a second. There you go. It really is a 20 second job. And that's the spokes. It's very dark in here. That's the spokes. And that will slot into any spoked wheel like that. Easy. Um, if you source wheels, do try to make sure that the spokes are in the centre of the wheel. Um, they're centred. Um, if you get offset, the spokes in the drive cog might not engage sufficiently. So you want the spokes in the middle, not here. It's very difficult to show this one-handed, but um, once you have the drive cog on the wheel, um, you put the belt on the drive cog here, and you push this onto the spindle and the belt engages the edge of the cog and as you turn the wheel you push it on and about 30 seconds later it will go all the way on and the belt's fully engaged on the cog. The other thing to note is there's no um, slots for the motor. If I get a close up of that. It's just four holes for the motor which means the motor cannot be positioned, um, it cannot be slid along the um, motor mount, it's fixed, which makes changing the size of the cogs and the belt problematic. You're pretty much fixed with what you've got here. This is a problem, um, as changing the wheel size without changing the gearing and puts extra strain on the speed controller and the motor. The larger wheels require more effort to turn, which means more current. Which brings us on to the last point, um, the electronics. So I put the large wheels on the Chinese clone board um, without changing the um, drive cog or the belt and just reusing the cog on the wheel from the Chinese clone wheel and tested it with the speed controller and motor to see if there were any problems. 
Um, with the alien speed controller, uh, yes, uh, huge problems. This got very hot very quickly. Uh, this was almost too hot to touch, going over just one hill. And the motor um, got very warm. Uh, so yes, don't use the alien speed controller when using larger wheels. So I thought I'd try fitting the VESC, which as you know, I've set the current to a 60 amp limit. Um, I think you can also set the temperature on this, but um, I've not fired up the software for a while, so don't quote me on that. And I thought I'd give that a go. And that did work. I've been using it in this configuration for a week, and the motor, um, at its worst, gets warm-ish, and the FET, I'm touching all the time when I'm testing it, and uh, they get slightly warm. That's pretty much it. That's shifting 16 stone um, of weight um, over hills. I mean, I would go over the same hill repeatedly, stressing this, and um, it handled it admirably. No problems. However, as you can tell, that's with the VESC exposed. Um, if I were to cover this, I'd very likely um, cut some holes in that shrink wrap and put a heat sink on top of these and there's some on the other side and put some on those as well. I mean, I don't know if that's necessary or not, but um, with also having it covered whilst um, moving me around on large wheels, I'd just um, be happier to having done that. So why would you fit a larger wheel over a smaller wheel? Why would you go from an 80 something millimeter wheel to a 97 millimeter wheel? Well, the first is cosmetics. Uh, it's a most shallow reason, but I do think the larger wheels look better. The second, more important reason is the handling. Um, a smaller wheel uh, going over the rough streets of Cambridge um, can be a problem going over cracks and bumps and stones and whatnot. Um, with the larger wheel, I'm more confident. I noticed that the first time when I took the Mercher board out, I'm much more confident going on rough terrain with the Mercher board than I am with the boosted board. Those smaller wheels are much more prone to picking up every bump and lump in the road as opposed to this. So that size wheel, you do get much more confidence riding a board around than you do on that size wheel. The other advantage is top speed is increased um, noticeably. I don't know what the uh, increase is exactly, I've not measured it, but um, it's significant and noticeable. I went down um, a few streets that are smooth, took the board up to top speed and it's much faster than using these wheels. I thought because the wheels are larger, going over hills might take a hit, but it doesn't. Um, I went over that um, cycle path, footpath bridge over the railway tracks you've seen in previous videos with these wheels um, several times and it handles it perfectly. So it's a win-win really. So I think that's probably it for my Chinese clone board modifications. Um, I did have one possible idea left um, to change the battery for some off-the-shelf batteries of a higher capacity but that's not particularly innovative. Um, anyone can get a 24 volt lithium battery and stick that on. As long as it's got a higher capacity than this which is meant to be uh, 8AH, I've not measured that, um, you'll increase the range. But this battery is um, more than adequate for my needs and if I go down the route of having replaceable batteries I want to keep this and get another one of the same type. So I think I'm going to choose from the modifications we've come up with so far, um, settle on a final design for my Chinese clone longboard and uh, make it. So with that in mind, until next time, bye for now.